When you think of Sun Devil football, you think of Sun Devil for life. If we get the Valley all in, the sky is the limit. I went to Arizona State. I'm a Sun Devil, man. I'm home. Hello, Sun Devil fans. Brad Denny with 3TV, CBS 5, and the Speak of the Devils podcast here. Welcome back for another episode of the Speak of the Devils sit-down series, where I bring you in-depth, one-on-one conversations with key players, coaches, and other figures within Sun Devil Athletics. This is the 13th year of the Speak of the Devils podcast and the 6th year of the sit-down series. Over that span, I've done over 1,000 interviews, and this is the first one in which the subject snake got loose mid-interview. But that snake breaking contain was about the only thing that has eluded Clayton Smith's grasp, albeit briefly, during his time in Tempe. A former five-star recruit, Smith spent his first two years at Oklahoma before transferring to Arizona State this offseason. And he was quick to make his mark, putting together a very strong showing in spring practices as a disruptive force off the edge. And his skills appear to be a perfect fit for the Sun Devils' aggressive new defense. And when he's not sacking quarterbacks... The reptile enthusiast is a crocodile hunter in training. In this fun episode, Clayton and I discuss his football journey, why ASU was the right place for him, the ins and outs of the new defense, proving the doubters wrong, setting his sights on Terrell Suggs, Texas barbecue, and a hilarious prank he pulled on a snake-fearing teammate, plus much more. So let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Clayton Smith. All right, Clay, so I know you guys are hard at work uh, with summer conditioning and the workouts getting ready for uh, fall camp. Uh, how are those workouts going for you? What's the vibe like with your, you're out there with your new teammates? Uh, so far, man, the vibe is good. We're getting after it every day, you know what I'm saying, getting better gradually. You can see the improvement. Um, I feel like as a team, we're growing closer together, you know what I'm saying, just enduring these hard workouts together, you know what I'm saying, kind of builds you together. But for the most part, I say the vibe is good. I mean, I think everybody around here is just ready to play football for the most part. You know, obviously you're one of uh, many, many newcomers on, on this roster so far. Uh, how has the team, the kind of the, the new staff, kind of uh, welcomed you and the other newcomers in and kind of getting everybody integrated and in, in, uh, facilitated that cohesion process? Well, I say when we got here, uh, there was a lot of humility by the staff. Just, I like that. They were blatant, saying that, you know, we got a lot of guys in and nothing's guaranteed. Everybody's got to work their way up from the bottom. And I feel like uh, that's that's one of the most valuable things you can get because that's all you want out of a college program and a coaching staff like that. It's a fair shot. And I feel like they set everybody down, gave everybody the same talk, and we rolled with it. Is it any kind of easier, you know, at a new place, knowing that there's so many other people in that kind of newcomer role and kind of you know, all experiencing this acclimation process together? Everybody's on the same level, you know. So it's not like you're looking at it as, okay, well, this dude, he's been here so and so years, his defense so many, so many years, and you already know and you think everybody's on ground everybody started on ground level and had to work their work at. And so you've had, you know, about uh, you know, six months uh, of in Tempe and, and you know, with Kenny Dillingham as as the leader of the program, a young guy, an energetic guy. Uh what has sta- uh, kind of jumped out to you so far about what you see from Coach Dillingham in a leadership capacity? One thing I like about Coach Dillingham and his leadership skills, he's very relatable. You don't get that out of a lot of college coaches at least from where I've been, because he is 33, 34. So he can actually, he actually relates to us. And he uses like, how do I put this? It's like his methods of coaching are, are new. You know, it's not monotonous. Like most programs, you know, it, it is different, but they kind of do the same thing. Like this is a completely new, I've never had a, a, a semester like this. Like how he's ran things, how he's handled things, even on the field, off the field, the discipline, just how he went about it. It's just, I don't know, I love it. Is I feel like it's as it's, it's blatant as you can be. I feel like, and it's not. It's fair. There's no. There's not really politics in this with this coaching staff. It's it's really just the best players going to be on the field, and that's what it is. Yeah, you know, in covering the spring practices, it looked like you know there was a great blend of you know really competitive and, and kind of you know driving up that com- competition aspect, but also having fun and remembering that, you know, football's a game and to, to enjoy the, the process out there. Um, when you look at the culture here at, with, with, under Kenny Dillingham at Arizona State, how does it compare or perhaps contrast against the culture, you know, at a traditional blue blood program like Oklahoma? 
the culture here is it's more laid back. You know, this ain't really just no big football city. So it's not like in OU, there's nothing out there but football. So it's like we kind of the local celebrities. But out here, I mean, it's, it's a big city. It's a lot to do. But the culture, I mean, it's laid back. It's fun. I love it. It's energetic. And we work hard. We have the most fun doing it. From a player's perspective, you know, what is it like just, you know, having that – that uh, you know, that laid back but fun culture, but also very competitive as well, and just like you know, having the ability to kind of straddle both sides and, you know, as you guys work towards a common goal. Uh, I feel like you need that, you know, because it can't just be you know what I'm saying each other next, or you're never gonna build a team. But the fact that we have fun doing it, it just it makes us grow together that much closer. As you mentioned, and you're you're going from a place like Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners are pretty much the only game in town, to you know one of the uh, five biggest cities in the country. Lots going on. Uh, what's been your favorite thing so far about just kind of life in Tempe? The no humidity. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I was going to ask that. Yeah, obviously, you know, we're in the midst of a heat wave. You know, we got about like 118 coming this weekend, but it, you know, it's a dry heat. So you know, uh, how are you, you know, adjusting? It's hot, but it ain't. It is different without the humidity. I could do this all day. So obviously, you know, coming from Texas, you know, what is what kind of Texas things though? You know, I'm assuming the humidity is not one of them, but what kind of Texas things do you think Arizona could benefit from if they had out here? Whether it's you know a restaurant or two, or just kind of something culturally that from Texas that you think deserves a spot out here in AZ. The barbecue for sure. Uh, every barbecue I've had out here has been dry, and I feel like you know what I'm saying some real Texas barbecue will spice it up a little bit. What, what's the what's your go-to spot back in Texas? Like, what's the best of Texas barbecue? Best Texas barbecue. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can't really say that because it's my people. My grannies, honestly. Okay. But, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of different spots. Like, if I'm going to get some, I'll probably go to Big Jake's. Something like that. Okay. Royal House, you know. Have you had Little Miss Barbecue out here in Arizona? Because that's typically the, about the best, as, as good as it gets out here. You said Little Miss Barbecue? Yeah. No, I ain't been out there. Okay, well, I will say that. It- a couple spots. I forgot the names of them, though. No. Yeah, Little Miss. There's a place kind of south of the airport. It's one of those places, kind of like Franklin's, where you gotta like wait in line, and they're, they're, they close whenever they're out of meat. So, um, but it, it's it's really good. But you know, I've heard you know it's good for Arizona, but maybe it doesn't necessarily stack up to some of the more traditional barbecue hotspots. Kind of going back a little bit, how did you get into football? I always played football. I was kind of born into it. My dad and my older brother played, so I didn't really have an option. <laughs> but it's what I wanted to do at the same time. So. So what are some of your earliest uh, football memories, you know, coming up in, in Texas? My very first game, I scored, but I ran the wrong way. <laughs> but I, no, like how I did it, though, I ran the wrong way first. And then they told me before I went in the end zone, I ran and back and scored the other way. Oh. My first game ever. <laughs> well, it's uh, certainly a, a memorable way to get your, your first points uh, on the board. Um, no, you know, for real. When did you – You me out there. <laughs> When did you, uh, you know that you were you were pretty good at this, and that uh, perhaps you had a future in the sport and could uh, you know move up in the game? I wouldn't say I just knew. I just always felt that way. Did so I mean, like I never compared it to nothing. I just always felt like I could do it. So sure, if I think I can do it, that's all I really matter. You know, uh, and then of course, you know, you become one of the uh, the highest ranked recruits. You know, a top fifty, top twenty five national recruit, five stars by a number of recruiting services. Um, what was that recruiting process like? Knowing that you know having those, you know those lofty recruiting rankings and, and, a, and a ton of schools coming after you. It was cool. It was cool at first. I'm not gonna lie. Senior year, I kind of got annoyed with it a little bit, talking to coaches every day. But you know, it was fun when it first started. Um, I was enjoying it, taking visits, meeting new people. It was it was real fun, especially yeah. being from where I'm from. Ain't too many people just got to experience that. So, and then of course, ultimately, you know, you. you choose the Sooners and you, you head to Norman uh you know what did you feel at all the pressure of like coming in knowing that you know you had that five-star tag kind of attached to you a little bit did you did you feel any of that pressure going in nah because everybody said the same thing stars don't matter when you get to college and that's the truth so I mean I thought about it a little bit like my freshman year but after my freshman season I didn't really pay much attention to it anymore you play a little bit as a freshman. Um, did you did you get frustrated at all that you, you perhaps didn't uh, you know get out there too much? And, you know, I believe you just said four games as, as a freshman to pr- preserve that red shirt. Or was that part of the plan? I or? Did. No, I did, I did. But at the same time, I was a young cat. I still had a lot to learn, and I understand now why they wouldn't play me as much. But looking back on it, I do wish. But it wasn't just my side. It was mutually me and my coach. But I wish we would have handled things correctly, and I would have been able to get some more snaps. Yeah, then ultimately you, know, you you go back for a second year there, um, but then 
ultimately decide to enter the portal. What were some of the, the, the reasons overall that you thought, okay, the, like I'm going to jump in the portal and explore my options elsewhere and get a fresh start? Uh, for me, it was just like, you know, I'm cool with, with sitting on have a problem with not being the guy like right away. But if I feel like I wasn't getting that opportunity to come to God, then I don't feel like there's no reason for me to do it, you know? I just felt like they weren't really going to give me that light or that opportunity to even try. So I had to come swear where I would get it. But you have two years in there, you know, with a program that's historically one of the better ones in, in the country. So you know, even though, you know, you, things didn't work out necessarily in Oklahoma, what were some of the lessons and things you took away from your experiences uh, as a Sooner? I'm going to use my Smitty lines for this. Dirty hard work in the dark. What you do when nobody's watching is what's going to separate you when everybody is. That's probably the biggest thing I like. Secondly, it would probably just be my own field habits. I feel like being in that program, they taught me how to how to really just take my game on the field to the next level, like really have a motor. Because, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm explosive. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm an athlete. But at the same time, I was, it was plays, you know what I'm saying? I'd be loafing or it'd be plays where my, my, just my head would be in the right spot. And I really feel like those two years of Oklahoma is what mentally got me in this position I am today, where I feel like I can, I can come out and I can perform and do what I want to do all in all. All right, so obviously, you know, when you jump in the portal, you know, a guy of your caliber, a lot of schools are going to be coming after you. Why was Arizona State the right place for you? I felt like they wanted to make me a guy, ultimately. And me being the kind of person I am, I'm, I would much rather be at a smaller school playing and, and, and doing what I do best than be at a big name school and, you know what I'm saying, getting the bare minimum. Because I'm not – my goal is the NFL. You know what I'm saying? It's, I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to do all, all that. But my goal ultimately is the league. It's been my goal since I was three, four years old. They honestly were just the best school to put me in position to get there. And I felt like the staff was genuine. My head coach from high school, he was already cool with some uh, members of the staff. So it was already kind of like family. I came in, clicked instantly, loved everybody on the staff. I haven't made a regret to my decision yet. Like, I just, I love it out here. So you mentioned you know, you're going, uh, you know, as, you, as you call it, so maybe a, you know, a school that's not necessarily historically on a tier like, you know, in Oklahoma uh, or Texas or something like that. But do, does the opportunity to elevate a program that, you know, ASU is you know, a big school in its own right, but, you know, has a lot of potential, but to help to be a part of the, the, the teams that can help realize that potential and turn that potential into actual wins and success in the field, does that ha- add any kind of like enticement to you? Definitely. It's exciting. Because I'm, I look at it as as I can be a part of the group that does it. So, just I, for me, I, I was never you know what I'm saying. I, didn't, I never came to Arizona until I got out here. So, everything out here was new to me. I got out here, loved it instantly. I saw the the fans, the type of people that got out here, and it's just like it's so much potential in the city and the program. It's it's ridiculous. So I, I use it as just motivation every day. Just when I go when I'm lifting, I'm just thinking about you know what I'm saying winning <laughs> i just feel like we win enough games we got eight home games this year if we win enough games man this is it's gonna be different around and hopefully we can be a part of the group to change stuff you're already a, a part of a, a big group of uh, texans that are coming to tempe and the, the pipeline is really starting to flourish you know with rashad samples brian carrington you know kind of leading the recruiting surge and you know a lot of uh, you know transfers uh, you know coming in from the lone star state you know, what is it like just kind of seeing, you know, so many guys from Texas kind of making the, the move out there to, to be Sun Devils? Well, you know, for me, because um, Arizona State offered me out of high school, but my thing was I never I never seen it. I had no idea it looked like this. And I feel like that's really the thing. Like, I feel like we can get a lot of more Texas kids if they actually come out here and see this light. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous out here. I had no idea it looked like this until December, I want to say. I feel like we get – enough Texas kids on visits and it's going to start with us because I mean we got enough out here so now we can go back and, and really show them like how it is out here and I feel like that's going to help us out a lot because so far Texas guys love it out here yeah, I mean it looks like that and also no humidity so it's best of both worlds so there you go exactly uh, you know talking about the defense a little bit now you're, you're playing in Brian Ward's scheme just overall what do you kind of like about the the four two five scheme of Coach Ward I like that we can play. I like that at the end of the day, we gotta be ball players. The scheme is a great scheme. We it puts us it puts us in the best position. We don't there's there's literally I don't think there's any wasted movement, honestly. But it just I, I love it. It's fun. We get the we get the rush, we get the we get the 
make plays in the backfield. We get the blitz. We get the drop. We get the stunt. It's it's just fun, honestly. And for the guy like me, I'm I like to I like to do it all. You know, I'm not just a. I mean, I could do it both, but I prefer to do more than just rush the passer. But I can do everything so far in this defense. I've had fun. It's simple. It's not complicated, and it's fast. So it's. I'm not gonna lie. It's real fun. <laughs> it's very fun. It's very exciting, and the plays that we came up with in the spring is 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 going to be some some to see in the fall. So, for any uh, Sun Devil fans out there, maybe didn't catch you in action uh, in Oklahoma, or perhaps uh, see your tape out of high school, give our listeners a scouting report on Clayton Smith. What are the skill sets that you're going to bring to this defense end of the field? Number one, sex. Main priority. Got to get the quarterback. Got to get the quarterback. Got to get the quarterback. Really, besides that, I just want to be the best teammate I could possibly be. Because I feel like if I'm that and my guys are playing at the best of their ability and I'm playing at the best of mine, I don't, I don't, I don't see a lot of teams just checking us. So I plan to bring a leadership role to this team, help add to the standard, you know what I'm saying, help set the foundation for years to come because we got to build off of it. Can't go backwards like we did last year. We definitely got to build off of it. And I'm planning on being the foundation for that. Now, uh, in spring practice, uh, you seem to be making plays. You were uh, a frequent uh, occupant of the Sun Devil backfield and uh, getting after it a little bit. You know, from the, that first practice of, of spring as a Sun Devil through that spring game, where did you see the strides uh, made most in your game? Mainly, I would say with my get off. I already had a good get off before, but I want to say that's really something I worked on in the spring, and I feel like I'm, I haven't took a false step in months. So I feel like I just I just got that down pat and also also my my evaluation like on my own field like pre snap reads and stuff like that I'm paying a lot more attention to the detail I'm picking up on little stuff you know what I'm saying and I also I didn't my film my film habits went up as well definitely been in the film room watching NFL guys our guys guys from last year just studying I really became a student of the game and I, I like that. How has Coach Regal really kind of helped things along? Uh, you know, coaching those edges up there. You know, he's actually, you know, back in my playing days I, in high school, he was uh, uh, one of my high school coaches. So I've known him for a little bit. But you know, what is what, what's the impact Coach Regal's had so far on your game in your few months here in Tempe? Love Coach Regal. Love Coach Regal to death. He pushes me, man. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't let me get satisfied, and I love that because um, before I even got here, he told me he knew the type of player I was. It wasn't a doubt in his mind. And the second I got here, he's pushed me to do nothing besides be my best. At the same time, we have fun. Coach Regal is funny as hell. <laughs> At the same time, we having fun. He, he's really, he's really got me better this spring. How comfortable do you feel in the the defense right now? And just you know, obviously, you're, you and uh, you know, everybody else is kind of learning this scheme. Um, you know, h- how comfortable and how much of the playbook do you have down, or do you feel that you have down right now? I feel like I got it. Yeah, that's just me though. But <laughs> it took me. I locked it in probably. Because I'm, I'm just like, when I get to play, I'm, I'm going to lock it in. I don't like to waste no time. I don't like to wait for installs. I like to get ahead. So if I already, you know what I'm saying, stated it, I had it. I said I had it down uh, like the mid-May, like after the spring game. But it's it's it's, it's simple, but it's, it's it's a lot at the same time. But it's nothing that our freshmen can't catch on to. But everybody should be everybody everybody should be locked in throughout camp. It shouldn't It shouldn't be a problem. And now that you've uh, you know you've gone through spring ball and, and also the summer workouts and some of the getting to meet some of the new teammates overall, you know who are some of the guys uh, on that defensive side of the ball that really caught your eye and really impressed you? First off, BJ BJ Green, yeah. that boy there, <laughs> <laughs> that boy there, he's he 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 he's one of them. He's like that. He's really like that. Um, let me see, CJ, freshman DT, a boy from Tatum. You know what I'm saying? Another Texas boy. He's 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 like that. Branshaw DBs. Let me see. Oh, Roski, Rose Horns. Yeah. I think I think everybody's impressed by that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Six two move like that. Rose Rose's gonna be really nice. JC, JC's just so consistent. I don't think I saw JC have an off day all spring. Will Schaefer, Trey Brown, they picked up the defense in well, Trey Trey already knew it a little bit. I get it. He already knew it because he came from Wazoo. Will picked up the they they have defense locked down in weeks they knew it before anybody like we was going out before the coaches had come out or walk through and they was already calling shots we got some guys on d 
you want me to go offensive, offensive side of the ball too? Uh, yeah, that's actually my next question because obviously, you know, it's not just a new defensive scheme here in Tempe. You guys are out, you know, there's going to be a new offense for the Sun Devils. You know, a lot, you know, with uh, Kenny Dillingham, Bo Baldwin behind that offense. What's it like facing this offense? Uh, you know, there's a lot of playmakers there. It looks like an offense that's, uh, you know, uh, predicated on getting the ball out quick and, you know, getting out in space. It's a very quick offense. I, they, <laughs> they, they, they do that. They get, they get plays off. Going against them, I, I, it's the tempo and the it's, it's a lot to get used to. But and they got some guys over there too. Like I'm not gonna lie. Let me see Badger. I knew I knew I knew I knew Jalen beforehand. I already knew he was like that. I knew he was like that in high school. Say I'm just say people I didn't know Elijah Badger. I didn't know I didn't know who he was for real. He came out I really was impressed. Uh, Xavier Guillory, same thing. Didn't know who these guys was. Came out day one. I'm just like I leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, well, Troy been eating. He was hurt a little bit in the spring. He came back, start turning up. He's looking forward to going camp, have a great camp. Quarterbacks, you got some, you got a, you got a nice quarterback room. It's kind of, it's a little stiff right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, and, uh, Jaden came in the freshman. He came in eating. He made it even harder. So it's going to be, I'm, I'm ready to see, honestly, I want to see a battle out of camp. I'm so excited for camp because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, to, it's a lot to prove. So yeah, obviously camp's coming up here pretty soon. But uh, you know, off the field, you know, you got a hobby. You know, you're a big reptile guy. You know, get, walk our listeners through. You know, how you got into it, and, and you know, what kind of uh, you know uh, crit- critters you got there with you. Honestly, I've always liked them. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember a time I didn't like snakes. I never was able to get them until. Okay, this is a funny story. So it's my freshman year of high school, right? Keep in mind, I, up this time, I love snakes. Been asking my mom to get a snake since I was like third or fourth grade. She's been saying, hell no. <laughs> but this day, I'm at Petco. And I'm like, damn, they had a snake in there for like, I don't want to say like $50, 60 I was like, yeah, like, I, it's, today's the day. I got to do something. So, I called my mama. I'm like, mama, you going to be mad, but I bought a snake. Listen, listen. I got the snake, the food, the tank, the sit up, everything was thirty dollars. No, I had to get it. it was thirty dollars. Cuss me out for a good five minutes. I couldn't say nothing. <laughs> but at the end of the conversation, I knew I was good. At the end of the conversation, she said, oh, "It better not be that big, Clayton." I said, oh, "Yes, ma'am." Hung <laughs> the phone up, went there, bought the snake, bought the set up, everything. Came back to the crib, <laughs> and that's how I started out. Uh, what's the what's the current lineup consist of now though? Uh, you know that, uh, you've got that first one. And you, know, you got the mama clearance reluctantly, but you know now all these years later, what's the current setup like? Ooh, I think I got eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine. I got nine right now. Nine. I had I want to say eleven at Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, I started. I got some of my teammates on too. They started getting their own reptiles. Start selling them and stuff like that. But. I don't know. It's just always been a hobby. I've always been a big Crocodile Hunter fan. Steve Irwin was my guy. <laughs> and I had no clue. Broke my heart. I didn't know he passed until, like, I got to high school almost. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. I'm just watching the Crocodile Hunter every day. Lit. Like, I got to meet this dude one day. Mama came in there. Broke my heart. <laughs> Is, is that something that, that uh, you want to, to explore, you know, whenever your playing days are done and you get going into – Zoology, or you know, getting getting into the reptiles as kind of more of a career. Whenever the the, fo- the football part of your life's done, yeah, I'll probably make it into a career. <laughs> it won't be. It, it, it probably won't be nothing I do full time, but I love doing it, so I'm always do it. But I'm 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 gonna probably just end up breeding. I was gonna do like exotic snakes. I was thinking about breeding. You know, once I like got done playing and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm for the most part. I'm, I'm gonna definitely be involved with them, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be breeding them. If I'm gonna be in the Everglades, Amazon, looking for them, you know, I don't know. We're just gonna see where it takes me. But I want to for sure. You could be the heir to the crocodile hunter throne. You know, you know, Steve's gone exactly. and he's left us, so you know, it could be your time to shine. Exactly. <laughs> have you found out any like teammates that are like have like a phobia of snakes or something? Have a little fun with them? <laughs> oh yeah, I got Troy already. Oh yeah. I got him quick. Oh yeah, he thought I was playing because I told him I told him my people was gonna drive my drive my reptiles out here to me. Thought I was playing, so I right, bet. So when he came in here, I ain't say I didn't say I got here. They ain't say they got set up with nothing. Open the door, my biggest snake on my neck. He got peed on this. 
Oh no, it was I should record it. That was funny as hell. <laughs> Because uh, Dilly, Coach Dilly told me I could, I could walk out with a couple of them around my neck. Okay, right. we don't, we don't see. It might be a little surprise. Don't even don't say that. Don't, don't let nobody know that. We might though. <laughs> we might though. Good, <laughs> good deal. Um, so you're obviously looking ahead. You know, fall camp's coming up. You know, when when camp opens up, so I know you're excited about it. What are some of the things that you want to show in fall camp? Some of the things that you want to get accomplished to get yourself ready for that season opener and the season ahead. Fall camp, I really just want. to I really just want to polish off my skills, you know what I'm saying? Make sure I'm 100% go, make sure I'm healthy, stay healthy. Honestly, I've been preparing for so long, I just, I'm ready. Fall camp to me, this is just going to be like the primer, honestly. Make sure I'm good, make sure the Young Bucks is good, the Young Bucks is playing, ready to roll, and let's get this thing started. Now the team's heading back up to Camp Tonazona for uh, a few days. Are you looking forward to to roughing it out there in the wilderness with your teammates? Oh uh, yeah, no, I I, uh, I can't wait. Actually, I'm taking my snake hook. I'm going to look for rattlesnakes. <laughs> I'm gonna be up there for two days. They said ain't no Wi-Fi in it, so you know I'm going hunting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I can't wait. They said it's it's beautiful up there. Yeah. And tradition. So I've never, I've never had a tradition like this. You know what I'm saying? Fall camp for me was just, we was in the city all day. But you know, it's gonna be fun getting to go up there. And I've never been. I haven't actually been out the city in Arizona. So you know what I'm saying? Leaving the city, seeing something different in Arizona is gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be an experience. Yeah, it's a you know nice pine forest up there. You know, people think Arizona is just you know desert, cactus, and everything, but it's a pretty diverse yeah, state. Yeah, I ain't, I don't, I ain't know. Yeah, I mean, great skiing up there in the winter. So, I mean, we've got everything here in Arizona. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, you're coming from a program in Oklahoma that's, you know, typically year in, year out, you know, cont- like looked at as a contender. Um, right now, you know, the, the national pundits, if you know, are thinking ASU might be a little bit of an underdog this year. Does that add, do you think that adds any kind of, you know, like chip on the shoulder or fuel to the fire for you guys? Most definitely. I'm the type, I don't, I love hate. That, that, that motivates me more than anything uplifting you can say to me saying i can't do something or saying or doubting us that's 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 for the fire and honestly i like it i'd rather us you know what i'm saying be predicted to go where we are now and surprise everybody than you know what i'm saying be at the top and upset everybody what are you uh most looking forward to and being a sun devil running out of tillman tunnel uh on game day and just you know kind of generally playing ball in the pac-12 honestly making memories we got a great group of guys and a lot of opportunity, honestly. It's not – I wouldn't say I just have, you know what I'm saying, a set expectation, but I want to win. <laughs> I want to win. I want to win. I want to win. So when when the season opens up in 2023 this fall, you know, what do you want to show the world that Clayton Smith can do? I wouldn't say show. Give him a bit of a reminder that I'm still that same cat that I was coming out of high school. You know, let them know that it ain't went nowhere. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it? Have you set forth any team or uh, any personal goals for this upcoming year? Yeah, I set a big one for myself. I'm not gonna lie. I'm aiming for a sack of half. That's the goal. Okay, so yeah, a sack of half. So I know. Puts, puts you at twenty. Big ass goal. I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. o- only yeah. one Sun Devil's done that before, and that's uh, Terrell Suggs. You know, Terrell Suggs. Up, I yeah. know it. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I already know. He got the record. I'm, I'm trying to get the record. He did it here, and, you know, I got the confidence, too. It's just all about getting it done. I'd like to thank Clayton for taking the time to talk with me for this episode. I'd also like to thank Jeremy Hawks of ASU Media Relations. Make sure you are subscribed to Speak of the Devil on the podcast platform of your choice for more episodes featuring guests such as Brian Ward, Jordan Clark, Joey Ramos, Brian Carrington, Ray Anderson, DJ Foster, Rashad Samples, Jalen Conyers, Trenton Borgay, and many more. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at BJenny29.